I'd like to call the meeting to order. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good morning, everyone. I want to... Um, Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Before we begin, I'd like to entertain a motion to amend the agenda for today's meeting. So moved. Is there a second? Second. All right. Uh, I'd like to add a motion to go into closed session at the end of the meeting um, so that we can uh, discuss uh, employment matters. So as moved. allowed by Section 11B 111, uh, subsection 4. So moved. Okay. Second. All right. Any question? Any concerns? All right. Then I will add that to the meeting agenda. Any other requested changes to the agenda? I also have uh, some changes I'd like to request. Uh, the first change, it's a slight wording change. Uh, instead of a second reading, it's uh, a motion for the acceptance of the proposed changes to resolution M02. Change number one. Change number two, I'd like to add a motion, and that motion is uh, to rescind a motion to issue a RFP for auditing services to be issued in fiscal year 19 and 20. And the third item for the agenda is a discussion topic, and that discussion topic is resolution M01, M10, CO2, and M04. It's feedback from the bylaws and resolutions committee. What was the first? So I got rescind motion for RP for the accounting firm. Uh, the third is a discussion. The third is the discussion of, on M01, M10, C02, and M04. And the first was a slight wording change because uh, we have on the agenda second reading, and it actually, uh, my understanding is it has to be now a motion to accept the proposed changes to M02. So under yeah. unfinished business, you're you're saying that now instead of second reading, I actually want to say a motion for M02. Right, and then in parentheses, second reading. Yes. Okay. Any other questions regarding the suggested agenda change? I will put that on there. One many more. And the only other one is for the record. For the record. Okay, for the record. Very good. All right, please note that we'll change the time on the Today's agenda from 10 a.m. to 9 a.m. It was a typo. Apologies for any confusion. All right, I'll entertain a motion to uh, accept the agenda as amended. So moved. moved. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of accepting the amended agenda? Please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Next item on the agenda is approval of minutes. Uh, for the meeting on September 19th, a special meeting. I want to entertain a motion to accept the, meet, many, the meeting minutes as presented. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of accepting the meeting minutes from the September 19th meeting as presented, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Yes. Next item is approval of the minutes from the October 2nd uh, regular board meeting. I'll entertain a motion to accept the meeting of minutes as presented. So moved. There's second. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of accepting the meeting minutes from the October 2nd regular meeting, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next item on the agenda, president's, president's remarks. I have none other than to say, I'm sure there's been a few other meetings in this room, but this is the first official board meeting in the newly dedicated Anna Foltz room. So hopefully that's something of importance to many of us. Moving along. Uh, next item on the agenda, the GM report, John Viola. Thank you, Doug. Okay, so the first one, we're kind of familiar with this schedule all year. Um, there's a lot of initiatives, objectives that we're working on. It's a whole team effort. Um, what I did here was listed all the construction, the clubhouse, uh, it's on track. If anybody's been down there, the foundations will be poured over the next couple of days. What we'll see over the course of the month in November is you'll see the framing, should be enclosed definitely before the beginning of the year. That's the plan. 
the timeline from the construction company. So right now, based upon the original plan from the construction company, we're on track, possibly, you know, weather permitting a little ahead of schedule. Should be done by May 1st for the opening of the busy season for golf. Let's look at the cost. The estimated cost is 1.6 million. That's the number you've all heard since the beginning from this board and everybody else. We are on track for that number. Um, there is a thorough scrubbing of it, review on a weekly basis. There is much oversight as well as checks and balances, uh, and it continues. Cart barn on track, January 2020. I'd hope to have it in somewhere in December, a timing for the construction crew. The material is there. If you're down there, you'll see that they are, as we speak, taking down the old cart barn. There is work they need to do on the foundation. Uh, we're on. I'm saying we're on track for January 2020. The estimated cost was 400,000. The estimates, the invoices, everything that I have right now is coming in under that number. Craft building on track. It's uh, if you walk by it on your way in here today to work, they're working on the roof. Uh, it's on track for January 2020. Debbie Donahue, Josh, there will be some type of meeting set up to um, disclose and update everybody, especially the craft people, on when they will make their change and how they will go from one building to the other. 85,000, we're on track for that number. Uh, Debbie has been all over it, and uh, I believe we have another payment coming up soon. Police building, all right, police building basically starting right now. Uh, have the plans, uh, we have an estimated cost now, $1.3 million, or the permits, the trail is on site. Uh, We'll start to see some work on that also. North Star software project. On track, um, plenty perfect timing. The estimated cost is 400,000, 250, 275 this year. I'm going to say we're on track for that. We might be a little over on that. Same thing with the timing. We, we have a timeline uh, this month, November, is the first time that we will go live with the financials. Uh, they, they went live last month with the different uh, departments. So I have asked the board and we have mentioned before, we could be a little late on the 13th workday. Uh, we will definitely communicate it and update everybody. Uh, better to be a few days longer and just ensure with this major change uh, that we reconcile and we're comfortable with everything. So far I'm being told everything is looking okay. Sipson Group, compensation study, uh, committed to the first week in November. I'm in the first week in November. Uh, I received the reports from the Sipson Group Thursday night. I have been reading them. I had a meeting with them the other morning, along with certain members of the work group. I, am, I will review the, the information this weekend. Nothing is a surprise from over the last month or two of what we've been talking about. I will put together Presentation, the team, certain members of the team will present, will present to the BNF committee, get guidance from them. I will definitely update members of the board and uh, it'll be totally transparent. Budget fiscal year 2020, 2021 <clears throat> on track. The commitment, <clears throat> excuse me, the commitment from the finance lead and myself and the rest of the members of the team was December 23rd, <clears throat> excuse me. We are definitely on track for that. What is back there? So as it stands right now, if, if somebody could just give me a glass of water. Thanks, Josh. So as it stands right now, compared to prior years, I have a budget. I have an estimated assessment number. We're working on the capital. Um, it's been a team effort. We have the Simpson Group compensation numbers. And we're ahead of last year by two months. So it should be a good, good holiday season for the team. And I hope to, uh, with the team, start to uh, discuss it with uh, members of the board and the committees. Okay. So right now the bulkhead Colby and her team working uh, diligently on the bulkhead. They've jump started it. Um, what I'm going to do today and right now is I'm requesting authorization from the board 
on a contract that we've received. It's a templated contract that Jeremy has prepared in the past. Kobe's team has utilized it for this contract with Fish and Marine. The board did receive an electronic version somewhere around October 10th. It's for 2,000 linear feet at $355 per linear foot. Comes out to 710,000. It's under the approved budget for the year for bulkheads of 1.6 million. And keep in mind, and I think Colby will show you what her dashboard and, and her KPIs, what they're looking to spend for the rest of the year. So we are looking for authorization on that. It is within the budget, the approved budget, and it's at 355, a number that we have communicated. John, are you looking for us to have that discussion right now? Or do you want to wait? Oh, what, I'll, what I'll do, Larry, is uh, we'll uh, add that item under new business and have the discussion. Okay. Turn the page, please, Colby. All right, so a little different slide here, uh, <clears throat> but it is important. I will read it for Josh. So we've had situations with the board meetings, with the communication, with the, uh, the streams. It's gone on for over a year. After it happened the last time, which was the first time for this team, uh, we definitely had meetings on it. We made changes, we evaluated, we did research. Josh has uh, a solution, which you're actually looking at right now. We bought the equipment for it. So basically, Ocean Pines made the operational decision to no longer live stream public meetings. Instead, starting with the October town hall, which we did, the public relations department will record meetings and ensure they are posted online within 24 hours. They will also be rebroadcast on channel 78 on the Monday, Wednesday, and Friday following each meeting at noon and again, <clears throat> excuse me, at 7 p.m. This decision should both save money and help improve the audio and video quality. We have tested it. It definitely adds the feedback I received after the town hall was very positive. There's also a $17,000 savings that I believe we're estimating that finance did for us uh, going with the route we are. So there is a savings, there's better quality. To compare to other, other communities, counties, whatever, um, you can see here Worcester County, only the town of Ocean City streams council meetings live. Worcester County uses a model like what Ocean Pines is now doing in Berlin, Snow Hill, Pocomo. Currently do not offer video or streams of meetings. So we do everything we do now, we compare. We benchmark and uh, obviously look at any financial decisions on it. So, you know, kudos to the team. It's definitely the right move. And that's pretty much it on that. Next slide, uh, financials. So as I mentioned for, I'm, I'm gonna report the September numbers today, but for the next, uh, the next month, for October's numbers, they will be coming out of the North Star system. So this still came out of Lanza. So a little, little different this, this month, and I have listened to feedback from many, and I, I don't see Joe here today, but um, what I did here, what we did was compare it to prior year. So in the new system, what I'm hoping for and what we're looking at is something that I'm familiar with, and I think everybody here that's worked in corporations is having financials compared, your current year compared to the prior year, the budget, and then your current year and your increases and decreases, both for the month and the year to date. So we're striving for that. But for this month now, what I am going to do is I'm going to give you the budget variations for the current year and compare it to the prior year. Very important because of uh, the numbers this year. Um, I just want to highlight and show where we were last year. OK, so these are budget variations that I'm showing you right here. So so for the prior year, you can see revenues are over budget by 8,000, expenses under budget 23,000. We had new capital uh, for the police. We were favorable 26,000 last year for the month. That favorability was mostly the police. There was some open positions in rec and parks. Uh, there was some timing and there was some uh, favorable uh, expense variation. So that pretty much told us where we were last year and that was the number. So if we look at this year, Obviously, we're up. That's a budget variation number, approximately 58,000 favorable to budget. When I compare it to the prior year, you can see for the month, we're favorable in budget variations, favorable by almost $32,000 from a good month last year. So what caused it this year? Well, the Yacht Club was favorable, 25,000. General maintenance was favorable, 16,000. 
Uh, some of that was timing, if not a lot of it. Turns Grill was favorable, $8,000, which was uh, very interesting since we closed it down. Uh, but uh, kudos to John Malinowski and his team. They definitely found ways to make money, and that made me very happy. Beach parking, less expenditures, was favorable, $8,000. Favorability, $58,000, $32,000 favorable prior year. Next slide, please, Kobe. Okay, so we're in five months, financial change year to date. If I look at the prior year, we were favorable, $95,000. The revenues were favorable. You can see at 259,000 expenses were over budget. Obviously, when you're dealing with amenities and you have favorable revenue, sometimes you're going to see, if, if not common, that your expenses would also be going the other way. But they were favorable, 95,000. Let's look at this year, year to date. And I have, a I have two slides after this to give you more detail. This year, though, favorable on the revenues, and I'll get into the detail, 461,000 but your expenses, our expenses were favorable to budget. That's a big one to me, uh, and I'll show you why. And it shows that we're not just doing better on the amenities. Total favorability, this point in time, five months for this year, $518,000. Compared to the prior year, increase of 422,000. It's a big number. Keep in mind too, that you know the next seven months, Obviously, we have a lot of operating expenses and our amenities are more or less, uh, you know, start to slow down. Okay, turn the page, please. All right, so this, this slide pretty much gives you all the detail to what I just uh, went through. If you just give me a second, we'll tie it all together for you. So the first page, broken out the amenities. When you look at it, these are year-to-date budget variations. September 2018 versus 2019, which I just showed you on the prior page. So we want to see, you know, where is all this favorability coming from? It's a big number. The Yacht Club definitely is $86,000 favorable. For the year, September five months, it's favorable $181,000, $86,000 better than the prior year. A lot of that is margin. Revenues are up. Expenses, everything is coming in line nicely for it for an amenity and a restaurant. Good job to Ralph, Matt, everybody up there, Melissa, Kristen. Beach parking, beach parking was favorable, forty-seven thousand for the year two thousand nineteen. You can see it compared to last year, pretty much on track. A little negativity in the increase or decrease. Beach club, same thing with the yacht club. Better margins, um, just better overall. Really coming in nicely. For 31, 32,000 favorable for the for the year so far. Now we do have some expenses that come in uh, over the next couple of months, but bottom line, compared to last year, you can see Beach Club doing better. Marina, marinas. <laughs> it's always Ron Fisher. So you can see always favorable. This is a gentleman who benchmarks, clearly knows his his market. Uh, custom combine that with customer service, good management, and good team. Favorable $49,000 to budget. Overall from the prior year, $26,000 favorable. So you can see it's not just the Yacht Club and the Beach Club. It's, it's across the board pretty much. Golf Ops, uh, again, we're in transition down there. A lot of change, a lot going on. Compliments to the team, compliments to the golfers, regardless if they're members of the golf course or the 1,800 households that utilize that golf course in Ocean Ponds. Outside play is up. Um, I've been down there personally to talk to the golfers from the outside play and I've gotten nothing but positive feedback from them on the course. Turns Grill, well, that's, a, <laughs> that's interesting. But um, again, credit to the team and everything they're doing. Uh, certainly they're not down there complaining. Uh, they are trying to make that operation work and I believe they are. Racket Sports, Racket Sports, I'll leave that for now, but I know Kobe's working on that, and uh, we were looking at that for the next budget. Aquatics, aquatics last year, uh, there was it was some unfavorability, doing better this year. Uh, there's been some change in the numbers or whatever, but if you look year over year, it's certainly moving in the right direction. I know they are looking at uh, pricing and some other uh, ideas for the next budget. We've already spoken about that. So overall amenities, 195,000 budget variance favorability from the prior year. You can see the number for this year, 331,000. Next slide, please. So 
Okay, so the top line is what we just spoke about. So let's look now at the uh, departments. Rec and parks, uh, favorability, it's coming in favorable, but you know, it's timing. They are scrubbing expenses like every department and every department habit I have, we review it, it's reviewed every week. Uh, we don't just wait to see what the numbers are. We are forecasting and checking even before we go into the months. So favorability increase from the prior year around $49,000, $50,000 budget variance from the prior year. Keep in mind though, there is timing there. Fire, EMS, and police. Uh, but to be honest with you, that one, last year there was some separate items or whatever, but it's pretty much on track. The police, the EMS, their budgets for this year is pretty much coming in track and should be by the end of the year. Some of it's timing, some of it's uh, positions. Public works, general maintenance, CPI is coming in favorable. Um, we do have timing on the maintenance. We did identify that the most, not most, but uh, a good part of that was the maintenance. Uh, Colby and her team, I can tell you the last several days have been working on that and we've been talking about where we're gonna uh, do maintenance. Keep in mind, a lot of Ocean Pines is under construction. Um, so there wouldn't be maintenance, but we are looking at projects on that. So we will give more update on that probably next month. But again, that should be, you know, timing. Public relations, um, there is unfavorability. I take that on myself. Uh, Josh and I talk about it every month. We believe and Josh believes that it will balance out by the end of the year and we're coming flush. There were some items that happened before Josh came on board and we will certainly take care of it. And we do. General Admin GM Office, well, last year we talked about it. Uh, there was HR expenses. There was several different items. There was uh, consultants, uh, IT expenses. There was a lot going on in there. I know BNF was instrumental going in, reviewing it, discussing it, uh, keeping in mind the legal expenses and everything, and definitely got on track last year. Uh, and this year, definitely favorability. Finance membership, basically the same. So keep in mind that favorability with, with a department that is in total change. It's almost like they started off with a blank canvas and they're putting together a new team as well as a new system. And one of the, um, one of the projects we have upcoming and Kobe and I have been talking about it is the operations manual policies and procedures that we would be working on that we definitely need and it's a good time now uh, with the new system. New capital, the five, five, the 5.4, there was some night vision goggles or something for the police last year that we talked about. Bottom line, there's your numbers for the association. 422,000 favorable budget variations compared to the prior year, around 500,000 for the year. We are working on a forecast. Uh, Steve and I have looked at it the past week. Um, we'll probably present something over the next couple of weeks. Um, keep in mind that, that number, and as I mentioned, the rest of the year, we usually um, are funding departments. So it will probably come in a little lower than the 500,000. Okay, and, and with a number like that, obviously it, uh, when you go to do the budget for the next year and you have a budget deficit that you're trying to cover, I have listened and listened to uh, the media, we will make recommendations that that surplus, hopefully that we still have it um, to go against the deficit and help the assessment. Okay. Is that it? Good morning. So my first uh, dashboard slide is on the current drainage fiscal year. These are the the items that we are have either completed or are working on. Watertown pipe is getting ready to start. Bids are going out for the border links pipe replacement that will look to begin about after January. Um, we have a couple small neighborhood pipe replacements. Those come in usually from the homeowners and we evaluate those and then go from there. Boston was completed. Mumford's Landing was completed. So right now that's our estimated total look to spend um, in the drainage roads reserves portion um, that is budgeted for 620000 The bottom part is the operational expense for the drainage budget. Um, that's where we sit currently. And right now we are continuing to clean out the ditches in the community, but we just started on the south end um, clearing the visibility from the Ocean Parkway 
we're starting on the South End Ocean Parkway, working our way north, and every intersection we're clearing back the brush and cleaning that out because we've gotten a lot of uh, people reaching out to us that when they're coming out with buses or or you know with the signs they can't see. So we did start that uh, about two weeks ago on the South End, and we're working our way north on the Ocean Parkway. So that should be a nice help. Um, I wanted to touch base. We had a meeting last Monday with DNR, um, Maryland Department of Environment, and a lady from UMD Extension. I didn't know what that was, but she is a, um, they look for ways to provide solutions for the community issues that we're having um, on water, drainage, stormwater. And it was a very productive meeting. Um, they came over from Annapolis. And one of the things that we discussed was additional funding, which we would have to go through the county since we're not a government agency. Um, and we walked around Bay Bridge Pond. Separate from the phase one that we're looking at for the fall for Bainbridge, they had actually mentioned expanding Bainbridge Pond, making it larger because it holds so much water from that area over there. So this is our early stage. We're just looking at it, but everybody was really positive about it. Um, one of the other areas is Wood Duck Park, and it's starting to corrode and de deteriorate from the erosion over time. And they had talked about planting some uh, vegetation that would absorb and help in that area. So that's an, an early stage, but it was very positive. And I want to make sure I get their names right. Um, one of the things they brought up, which I thought was really great, Tracy Gordy, who we've been working with, um, with Maryland Department of Environment, had mentioned, and we, I reached out to her after the meeting, had mentioned coming down and bringing a gentleman named Kevin Wagner, who is a, um, who can do a workshop for the community on flood plan and flooding issues to highlight things that homeowner, homeowners can do to protect their property. Um, one of the other areas was having the state's hazard mitigation officer come down because there are homes that where we don't have property to help that people might be in areas where they can actually receive grants themselves. So we're going to be looking to offer those workshops after the first of the year. We'll put those out to the community through Josh, but it was a lot of information, which is one of the things we're trying to get out there. So this is our, uh, John had previously gone over our, our bulkhead contract spending to date and the fiscal year spend. One of the reasons why we're, we're selecting Fisher is because you can see the other two major contractors are currently already working. So in order to keep moving, uh, he was the one that's available for us now to continue with working on those ball kids. This is uh, just, again, John went over a major project spending to date. So Billy and I, uh, she works in the CPI department, um, work together on just highlighting, kind of putting out there to show CPI violations since that's been a big uh, discussion. This is just fiscal year. And so the blue box are CPI violations that were sent into the Public Works Department and were visited by our CPI officers. The purple ones for the, for the month were the CPI violations that were complied. You can see in July that the purple is higher than the blue and that's because these take so many days so they may not comply out that month. We just happen to have a lot that did in the month of July, probably because a lot of people are down for the summertime. But um, then we have 31 currently with the attorney. So just wanted to point out the CPI violations. So also the CPI violations are higher because they are carried over from the fiscal year. So total to date fiscal year, the 442, but some of those are from the previous year. That's just, they're still open. Oh, let me just jump in just to emphasize that. There was such a bad backlog. Uh, oh, sorry. There was such a backlog um, before Kobe and her team approached all this, and they have picked all that up. And those calls have basically all been answered one way or the other. It may not have been resolved to people's satisfaction, but that major backlog has been uh, addressed. Thank you. Thank you. I wanted to also highlight people 
comment a lot about the work orders. So work orders, and, and I've mentioned before, are items that come in mostly from homeowners, but also from the team to the public works department that are above and beyond the day-to-day -day operations. So this just highlights per month how many were entered and completed. Again, these also carry over, carry over and we do have some that stay open all year because they may just be a constant maintenance thing, but just again, wanted to highlight um, the work orders that were entered and completed and just so everybody could see that number. Oh, Larry. Thank you, Colby. Oh, and don't forget to put your clocks back tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Colby. Uh, next item on the agenda is the treasurer's report. Larry. Uh, good morning, everyone. Um, again, uh, next slide, Colby, please. And the next one. Uh, again, as uh, we're doing every month now, uh, I'll give you an update on where we are uh, from my perspective. Uh, overall, uh, our investment rate of return for September was approximately 2.5%, which in this market is excellent. Um, uh, as of uh, September 30th, we had approximately $15.1 million uh, in cash. Uh, in, and comparing that to last year, the number was about $13.4 million. So you can see our cash on hand is up, uh, which is good because we're going to, we again, as we've talked the last couple of months, uh, we need that cash on hand to cover the projects that we have going forward. Uh, we have approximately 7.3 million invested in CDARs. And again, they're fully FDIC insured. And we have another 7.8 million in money markets, earning uh, an average of 2%. Uh, and that is uh, uh, the operating accounts and they are all fully insured. Next slide. Okay, reserves. Uh, again, this is, uh, I'm going to show this every month. The, uh, again, you can see our, uh, we started out April 30th, 19th with a total balance of 8.8 million. Uh, the, uh, uh, with the current spend, we've spent about $1.6 million overall. Um, and, uh, and of course that's for all three funds and our balance as of September or as of September 31st, is it $10.2 million. Next slide, please. And again, the forecast, and again, this is, uh, you know, is, uh, uh, this is probably the most important slide we want to see with what we're spending this year, where we're going to be at the end of the year. Um, mostly, uh, you know, the biggest spend, of course, is coming out of the replacement reserves. <laughs> Um, again, for replacement reserves, we started the year at about $2.3 million. Uh, we added almost $2 million, and uh, uh, we're projecting expenditures for all our projects this year um, to be at about $4.4 million. Should leave us at the end of the year uh, at about almost $2.9 million. Um, and uh, again, that's a that is a soft number because I know John's going to bring this, uh, these projects in under budget. So <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> so that number should be a little higher. Uh, bulkheads, uh, tr uh, uh, Colby just gave you the numbers on bulkheads. We project at the end of the year, we should be, uh, we should still have about $1.2 million in the bulkhead reserves. Uh, roads, you know, as, as if you've been driving around the community, you see the roads are being done uh, after a two year hiatus. And uh, so we're projecting at the end of the year total uh, reserves at being about $4.6 million. I think that uh, puts us in a pretty healthy condition, even considering we're going to spend $4.4 .4 million uh, just in uh, replacement reserve money this year. Me. Thank you, Larry. Next item on the agenda is public comments. And as our requirements, if you please, you're invited to make a public comment, please state your name and your address. The floor is now open for public comments. Seeing none, I'll close the floor for public comments and move on to our- That must be a, that must be a first. We should, <laughs> you know, we should start these meetings an hour early every day. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next uh, wow. <laughs> Hurry up, we get out of here before 10. <laughs> so there are no uh, capital purchase requests this month, so I'll move on to the next item on our agenda, and that's CPI violations. 
The first one is 31 Sundial Circle. Uh, John, give us a little bit of background on that. Just give me one second. Apologies. Okay, thank you, Colby. Okay, so the first one is 31 Sundial Circle, violation debris, violation reference, section 8.1. They're, they're requesting that to send it to the OPA attorney for action. I'll entertain a motion to find uh, 31 Sundial Circle in continuing violation. So moved. So moved. There's a second? Second. Discussion. Question. Yeah, I, I've discussed uh, it. Frank, go ahead. John, with all these, the, this one and every one that we'll be discussing, given the changes that we have in motion, when we're talking send to OPA attorney for action, do you need anything from the board, like a direction from the board to instruct the attorney to proceed to get a court order? Or is that going to be the normal course in these? So... Are you talking about the new, the, you know, yeah. with the new, with what we've been talking about in the work groups, and I, I believe you're going to bring forward today, I would be able to go, the GM would be able to go forward with the fast track or whatever. Do you need anything from us to do that? No. Yeah, I have a, Outside I have a, of you, the overall saying oh. that I, I can, do, the GM can do it in the team. So this is sort of both for John and for my colleagues here. If you look at the, uh, uh, the violation here, it's debris. Uh, would this fall under the notion that we can enter a property and remove the debris? It's not a personal asset uh, and it's not anything else uh, having involved any kind of a legal. And I believe our uh, DRs allow us to go on the property. Would this be one where we rather than going to the attorney, we would ask um, yeah. the, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. O the uh, Ocean Pines uh, Public Works to go on site and remove the debris? Yeah, they, they, and that's a good question. This is one that kind of. Uh, is kind of like a borderline. I'll give you a little more detail and Colby and I were just talking about it too. Is the sense is we understand the last time uh, Tom brought up, if there is a Boeing, uh, if it's high grass or whatever, yes, we'll go on and we will do that. What happened last time, there was other violations on the property that the, the team actually had gone on and do, did the mowing. Um, when this situation, and this one is a, is a borderline one, but at times the team doesn't feel comfortable going onto the property. Um, and even the chief has told us that, um, you know, possibly this is a situation where we shouldn't just go on there. This is one that I would hope we could, but uh, for whatever reason, so we're recommending to go to the lawyer. Frank? I can, uh, Doug, it, you know, generally there are three groups involved. Uh, when I say we have public works, we have the, the police, and we have our attorneys that have given us input, and nobody feels comfortable right now, given our situation that we live in in 2019, going on somebody's property without a court order. Okay, We've been advised against it by the police. We've been advised against it by our own attorney. And public works just doesn't want to do it because you set up confrontations. And at the end of the day, I mean, to, to be perfectly blunt, when you get a court order, the court sends somebody that has three things that this association does not have. They carry a badge, a gun, and a warrant. And unfortunately, that's where we're at emotionally and societally in today's environment. Right, right. Other discussion? I agree with I agree with Frank. I mean, we we could unfortunately with the atmosphere that there is today, we could be exposing our employees to uh, unnecessary uh, confrontation that they don't need. I agree with both of oh, them. I mean, excuse, I, I don't. I'm sorry. To, I don't mean to be a stickler. Robert's rules of order. Please be recognized by the chair, and then you'll be allowed to speak. Mr. Yeah. Chair. No. And I have to I have to agree with both of them. I mean, what is on your property, you're hanging over your property is your property. And the debris, although it's not desirable, it remains the property of that homeowner until otherwise determined. So I, I would have to agree with the comments that have been made here. What? The letter? Home her Certified. 
We have one August 23rd that's certified second letter sent. And I'm glad yes. I'm sure they that. Certified mail. If I may. Tom. Um, do we, I, I, don't, I know it's probably a very, very limited situation that would ever happen, but thinking about it, they're, they're, a, they're up to date on their assessments. Do we ever reach out to them and give them the option of having public works and sending them a bill just to reach out and see if they would want us to do that? Have we ever done, like, just gave them a call or sent a letter that said, by the way, you might not be down here a lot, or you might not have the facilities to call somebody or find a maintenance person to do it. We'd be happy to go and do it. And this is going to be the charge. I mean, have we ever reached out like that in some cases? I don't know that it would probably work in more than 1% of the case or even that, but we're going to go on the property anyway. Maybe we can even get their permission before we go this much further when it comes to debris and things like that. Don't we charge them? Don't we charge them and stuff like that? Yeah. <coughs> so, so, um. so in the past when Public Works has done stuff, they do charge um, as far as... Uh, calling the homeowner first. I'm not aware of that, but it's certainly something that, you know, we can talk about and, and look at doing that possibility, of course. Looking at it as an option possibly for, yeah. you know, just in case they, they just don't have the ways of doing it or they're sick for a year and have no way of even calling right. somebody. We can say, look, here, we'll do it. It'll cost you 200 bucks. We'll go in there. We'll clean off the debris. It'll, it'll clear up your violation and that yeah. will work out. No, it's a good point. Yeah. We'll definitely expand on it. Kobe's writing it down as you speak, but yes, right. we so will definitely do it. For you. Yep. Larry? Yeah, I was going to say that um, years ago, before I built my first house across from Tom's Taj Mahal in Teal Bay, <laughs> I I owned a lot across the street and actually got a note from Public Works that the grass needed to be cut on the lot. And that letter did include the option to have them do it, which right. I did because I was living. Right. So it's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, uh, one comment for myself, I, and, and I agree with Frank and, and Larry, there is a certain reluctance to have uh, either the police uh, or a public works folk go on a property, even though it is debris, but uh, sort of at a very sort of high level. So now we're actually having to pay legal costs in order to follow our declarations of restrictions, which some to me is kind of counterintuitive. Uh, but I do understand the practicality of it. Uh, in this case, I think we'll just move on to... Uh, uh, at least I'm in favor of, you know, finding them a continuing violation. But I think the onus is on us to follow up with these kinds of discussions because I don't want to certainly set a precedent that allows us to, you know, go go forward saying, hey, every time somebody puts out a, you know, a bag of trash, it's going to cost us a court order to get rid of it. I mean, yes, reduction of certium, but the idea here is that if we don't take some proactive steps, and I think obviously more discussions involved in that, but I, I just don't want to set a precedent that regardless, we're just going to, Forget the, de forget the declaration of restrictions because it basically gives us legal authority to do that. We're just uncomfortable. So that sort of trumps any action we may take and be legally available to take to us. So uh, I think more discussion you know, is required on this topic as we move forward because we can't, in my opinion, we can't continue to operate in fear. <laughs> so even though, is, and Frank and I agree with you, in, in 2019 or in our litigious society, you, you look at somebody funny and here comes a lawsuit. So uh, I think we have to find some kind of happy medium there. Anyway, uh, other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding 31 Sundial Circle and continuing violation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, next one is uh, 60 Nottingham Drive. Yes, 60 Nottingham Lane. RV parking time limit violation. Violation, violation reference section 800 oversized vehicle RV and trailer regulations. Uh, lists all the letters and everything they went through and the recommendation of uh, management to the board sent to OPA attorney for action. Entertain a motion to find 60 Nottingham Lane and continue violation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? And none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding 60 Nottingham Lane and continue violation say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Next one is nine Dove Lane. Okay, nine Dove Lane violation RV parking time limit section eight hundred oversized vehicle recommendation sent to OPA attorney for action. I'll entertain a motion to find mm -hmm. uh, nine Dove Lane a continuing violation. I move. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding nine Dove Lane and continuing violations, say aye. 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 Any opposed? 
<coughs> Next one is 37 Driftwood Lane. Okay, just give me a second. So let me just make sure I got the right one. 37, yep. Violation is maintenance, as section 8.1. Maintenance is the violation reference. Recommendation is to send to OPA attorney for action. I don't know if you have pictures of it up there. Mm -hmm. but you, yeah, I do. You have I'll uh, entertain a motion to find uh, 37 Driftwood Lane in, in continuing violation. I move. There's second discussion. Um, I'll, I have a, a comment. If you look at the uh, information provided, high grass and debris. Now, here's another one of those ones that obviously may uh, have been able to be taken care of by public works. You right. know, and so on and so forth. So again, as these come up, I think it looks at the idea of us having to come to some sort of agreement, both legally and risk wise, uh, that allow us to not always incur the cost of a court order in order to take these actions. So other discussion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding 37 Driftwood Lane and continuing violation, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Next one is 74 Whitehorse Drive. Okay, 74 White House Drive, violation, maintenance, and debris. Um, as Kobe just pointed out, and I'm looking at the pictures, there's a huge, huge hole in the roof. And if you see the pictures, it's pretty bad. I'll entertain a motion to find uh, 74 White Horse Drive and continuing violation. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion. Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of finding 74 White Horse Drive and continuing violation, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. That finishes <laughs> CPI violations. The next item on the agenda, unfinished business. The first item is a second reading to amend resolution <coughs> F03. Larry? Uh, I move to amend resolution F03 as listed below. Uh, uh, four reserve accounts add, uh, well, it's redlined. Uh, do you need me to read all the, uh, it's, it's in the motion. You... Um, unless any of my colleagues want to read the entire red line version, I would offer to the general public that that information, let me, let me double check. Is that information posted on the website somewhere yes. so they can see the, all right. So given the fact that it's posted on, thank you, Josh, that is posted on the website, unless somebody specifically requires it, Larry, I would guess that you would not have to read through the red line after okay. the first reading. All right. So background, the current funding for our new capital requires the board to budget uh, to budget projects through the operational budget. The effect of the new capital costs are directly added to the annual assessments. Controlling the increase in annual assessments has, has and continue to cause uh, this and future boards to attempt to control assessment increases by not making necessary new capital purchases. Purpose and effect, a reserve account dedicated to new capital expenditures will allow for better financial planning and control without directly impacting the association's yearly assessment. It will also eliminate the tendency to forego necessary new capital purchases and projects because of the direct impact on the annual assessment. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Oh, I think we, we discussed. Oh, I'm sorry. You recognized by the chair, please. All right, Larry. I think we discussed it pretty well last month. Uh, again, um, I think that uh, I think the feedback regarding uh, two things that concern me that I've heard is that this will be a slush fund. I wholeheartedly disagree. We already have a slush fund, which is our replacement reserve fund, which has been used in the past. Uh, sometimes appropriately, sometimes right. not appropriately. So this is a much smaller fund uh, based on the uh, uh, limits we've, uh, we're trying to put on it. Uh, secondly, um, the, the discussion seems to be and the concern seems to be that a board, uh, any board, this board or any board down the future will come in and say, we're going we're gonna to take this money and do something with it. Well, that certainly that could happen, but if we use the limited uh, limit numbers that I've uh, put into this motion to change the resolution, five hundred thousand spend in, in any particular year, that could be overridden by any board. But with a maximum amount in this account of a million dollars, if in fact something 
like that were to happen, that certainly would limit that amount to a million dollars. The other items I wanted to point out is that, again, the discussion seems to be that uh, this money could be used for some grandiose project. If you look at the numbers we're talking about, that's impractical at this point. I mean, $500,000 is a lot of money, but we're not going to build a bowling alley or a parking garage for $500,000. We're not going to do it for a million dollars for the most part. Um, so those those concerns, while I understand them, quite honestly, I don't think they're, in my opinion, I don't think they're uh, they're appropriate. Um, and yeah, of course, we, you know, we can agree to disagree. The bottom line is this is, if, if you look at, um, if you, again, if you look, if you look at what we have actually spent, um, we've spent about $150,000 a year on new capital projects. And again, as I've mentioned before, that does not include uh, the projects that were not approved uh, because we didn't want to raise the assessments. Now, after our last meeting, I have to tell you, I got a text from Colby and she went back and totaled what she had requested for the last five years. Yeah, and it was, it was over $1.2 million had been requested in new capital spend that had not been spent. So, and the, of all that money, there was only one project that was $200,000 and that was the addition to the uh, sports court. So um, again, I think this idea that this is a slush fund, uh, we already have a slush fund, if you wanna call it that, the replacement reserves. Um, this is a, from a financial standpoint, this is appropriate and uh, provides for better planning and financial control by this board. Um, and the, the other arguments, I, I just, uh, well, I understand them. And, and you know, this is, not, this is not 20 years ago where uh, we ran into problems with boards that haphazardly did spending um, uh, different ways without thinking about what is right for the community. I, my, I mean, I grant it that it could happen again, but I don't, I, don't think, I don't think we should limit doing what we're supposed to do for uh, sound financial reasons because we're afraid that in 10 years a board will be here and do the wrong thing. I don't, I don't think that's correct. So again, um, uh, I would urge my uh, uh, fellow board members to approve this uh, to help improve the financial controls and uh, processes here in Ocean Ponds. A discussion, Frank. Yeah, I, I, I'd say, Larry, this, I've become reluctantly more comfortable with this because here's the dilemma that, here's the dilemma that we face. It is absolutely true that there are things that should be done in this community that falls under new capital that haven't been done in the name of keeping the assessment low. It is also absolutely true that there are things that should have been done in terms of maintaining our facilities that haven't been done to keep the assessment artificially low that have caused us a lot more money because we haven't maintained them. Balancing that out is the fact there's no easy way to create this fund with proper controls to prevent misuse. And I mean, and I've looked at it and talked with the attorneys. There's just no simple way to govern from the grave. And I mean, I feel comfortable with this board and this general manager, but to say that there haven't been abuses that this mechanism would have fueled in the past was simply not true because I moved in here in 2013. And I can tell you since then, there have been boards and there have been general managers that would abuse this. So to me, it's kind of damned if I do, damned if I don't, because we need new things. We need a mechanism to fund it. And this is the best method forward. But I would just caution everybody that there are potential risks in doing this and downsides that are significant. Other discussion? Go ahead. Um, I agree, Frank, that there are definitely some risks and there have been risks. And I 
urgently like our strategic planning committee have a role making recommendations to the board ongoing on these types of spends. I think we need this um, fund for better financial planning. I think it helps our administration out to do that. Um, we need to check, and I think strategic planning committee. I have a comment. Uh, actually, I actually have a couple. Number one, Colette, thank you. We'd mentioned that in the last meeting, and I think that uh, that's a great idea to really kind of use the strategic planning committee as the conduit for information for understanding what needs to be done from a capital expense perspective in the community. Uh, so I certainly would be in very supportive of an advisory committee that actually uh, you know can help us out with that. Larry, uh, just need a confirmation. I'm reading through uh, Section 8, and the funding will you know come from up to 10%. And under Section 8B, it says... Um, the amount not to exceed one million. I would assume, and I just need clarification that that up to ten percent would be the governing factor. In other words, if we're approaching a million dollars and we haven't spent anything, and we can only appropriate a uh, hundred thousand dollars so that we stay under that limit, that'll become part of the budget process. All right. Well, it, so yeah, uh, so, I, that's right. That's, so that's the mechanism that we'll use yeah. to make sure we don't exceed that one million. And it is in there. Okay. And then the, I just want to confirm because yeah. reading it, it looks like the same. I just want to confirm that that's the case. And then um, the other part of it is, I guess we're turning that back over to the GM and basically saying you as the GM need to make sure that you and your finance team needs to make sure that you understand the balance of this and that your budget submission would include considerations for keeping the limit where it is. I think, it's, I think it goes without saying, but I just want confirmation that everybody's on the same page and that's how we'll handle it. That's how we'll manage it and execute the uh, tenants in this particular uh, uh, resolution. John, comment? Yeah, so actually Colby and I have spoken about this the last couple of weeks and we are going to engage with the strategic planning committee and uh, it will be part of the budget process and we will have over. Good. Yeah. Right. Thank you. Other discussion? I'm actually not in favor of this, primarily because I don't, I'd rather have a plan and then I'll spend money. I don't like putting all this money aside and not having a real plan and understanding how we might spend it. Uh, the second thing is, I think we should take the money. If we, if we feel there's something that needs to be done in this community, then it's an assessment that needs to be charged and not taking it from uh, the plan as presented. So I would just say, if we need to do it, bite the bullet and change the assessment. Uh, a request for suspension of uh, Robert's Rules of Order for a minute. Anybody, any concerns? All right, consider Robert's Rules of Order suspended. Uh, Jim Trumbull, I'm going to put you on the spot, and I apologize ahead of time. I just want to, uh, this is a matter of protocol. So we can declare this discussion as the second. I don't need a comment from Jim. I just need an affirmative. This, uh, this can be declared as the second reading. And from a Robert's Rules of Order perspective and parliamentary procedure, we can then move into a motion to accept the changes. Is that correct? Okay. I just want to confirm. So that's what we'll do. So, so I'll officially declare this discussion to meet the requirements of the second reading of a resolution. All right. And then we will certainly honor the uh, motion uh, presented by Larry uh, in order to uh, uh, approve the changes. So any final discussions? All right. I uh, will consider Robert's Rules of Order reinstated. And then I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion to accept the changes to resolution F03, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Opposed. And please record the vote. Motion carries. Thank you. Uh, the next item under unfinished business is a motion for a second reading of M02. Frank. Yes, this is the one we slightly changed. The new reading of that, and the board has the uh, as the package is. Uh, uh, Acceptance of proposed changes to resolution M02 and in brackets second reading. The motion is to accept the proposed changes to resolution M02. Uh, the purpose and effect. These changes update resolution M02 to reflect the addition of pickleball facilities and amenity, legal rulings, and the requirement for business plans and metrics. Uh, the background uh, attached again in your package and in your board packet is... Uh, the comments from the bylaws and resolutions committee, which have been incorporated into uh, into the uh, change, um, and uh, that is basically it. I mean, it reflects simply the addition of some amenities, pickleball, and our drive to get business plans and metrics into running each of our amenities. Okay, is there a second? Second discussion. I have one, just one comment. Steve. There, 
under the fee-based amenities, it yes. lists the boat ramps. And yes. as far as I know, we don't charge for our boat ramps. Or yes. at least we don't at the Whitehorse Park. Yes, that is correct. The boat ramps have always been fee-based amenities, and it seems the board has Oops. annually struggled with collecting that fee. Uh, now, I don't own a boat, so I'm willing to strike it out, but I wasn't going to make that change just unilaterally. Well, comments, other comments. Yeah, I mean, Tell I me. would personally, we've been trying for years to get a gate on that boat ramps to make it a fee-based amenity. So I would leave it in. I don't think it hurts anything because if we have to, then we're going to have to add it after the fact. If we ever actually, you know, jump off the cliff and put a ramp there and I mean a, a gate there and actually charge, which we should have been doing for the last eight years since we rebuilt Whitehorse Park. So I would personally leave it in. I don't have a problem with it. Other discussion? Seeing on a call the question, all those in favor of accepting the changes as noted in the motion to uh, resolution M02, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. That's the last item under unfinished business, so we'll move into new business. Um, we added a, uh, a motion based on our general manager's report and request to approve the Fisher Marine contract as presented, so I'll entertain a motion to approve the Fisher Marine contract as was presented. So moved. I'm moved. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? Uh, Doug? Sorry. Yeah, the only uh, question I have with this, and I, I understand that we want to uh, approve this contract. I, I guess from my own perspective, this money was budgeted. Uh, the RFP went out, came uh, back to us under the budget, and I, if I re remember correctly, and uh, correct me if I'm wrong, last year I think the guidance from the board was if the if we budget the money comes in under, or if it comes in at that number through the RFP process, that the general manager has the authority to go ahead and move forward. Am I, am I mistaken? Uh, that Part of that's correct. The general manager has the authority once approved by the board, because a lot of times these will, these will exceed the spending limit of the GM. But uh, your point is well taken. And I think one of the things we tried to do this year, and Larry, you're absolutely correct. We, you know, one of the things that we've encountered is something will come up prior to a board meeting. Let's say something comes up. Uh, we're not going to have a board meeting until December 2nd. And something comes up that's time sensitive uh, on November 2nd. And it needs to be done by November 10th. All right. Well, if we wait to get through to the board meeting, then obviously we could put ourselves in jeopardy, both, you know, probably most likely financially because uh, or or functionally, you know, like they have resources available to do a project, et cetera, et cetera. If we sign the contract, we're good to go. Or they're offering discounts based on the fact that we signed the contract. And so it would be a shame to squander the association's money uh, by waiting for the next board meeting. Uh, this also comes into play. And as Larry mentioned, we we have, as a team, discussed the idea that if it's within the budget and it's under the the budget number, then really all the board needs to do is acknowledge and give authorization to the GM. And it doesn't necessarily need to come to a board vote. Although uh, what we plan on doing is if that happens to occur, that we will certainly bring the information out to everybody and say, based on the following set of circumstances, uh, you know, it was under budget, and we'll give all the specific details, we have approved, you know, as a board have approved this contract, all right, to, to move forward. So that's kind of where it is. In this case, it kind of fell into the fact that, well, we're having a meeting on Saturday. John brings it up now. And we go, oh, well, we might as well just go ahead and put it on the floor today. But uh, that might not be the case going forward in every situation. So just an FYI, more of a making sure that the membership understands where we are in any particular contract and is aware that that, that uh, business is ongoing. So, other discussion? All right, seeing none, I'll call the question. I, I do have something on it, if I, John, if I may. please. So with all the contracts and everything going on, and I understand this and I understand the transparency and I totally get it with the board and obviously we're, we are complying with it, my team and everything, but just to reflect back on what Larry's saying and just to think about it as we execute something like this. I'm in a meeting, I'm dealing with somebody who could even be Kobe or anybody. We're dealing with them. We tell them, yes, we have a budget. Yes, we need this service. Get up, shake the hand. We we have a deal. We'll bring it to the lawyer. And then I'm like, up. Oh, but let me just hold on for a second because now I have to wait a month because seven people in a boardroom have to authorize and okay it. It's just that comes into play. Uh, sometimes it affects it. Sometimes it don't. I just want to note that. But we're definitely in compliance and do everything that this board and the bylaws say. 
but that is something that I've seen, just to be honest. Yeah, noted. Like I said, board will take that into consideration with regard to timing uh, and the potential that we could cause a problem with any delay that, that we uh, introduce. Any final discussion? Just a comment. Frank. You know, when we go through a budget process and put a budget together, and, and in this case of the bulkheads specifically, because it, it seems to me, if, unless my facts are incorrect or I don't understand them, we went through a budget process and approved a budget. We went through an RFP process and we really qualified three contractors. We have a program that basically nothing was done for two and a half years and it's behind schedule. So when it comes time that when one contractor is booked, which should be the lowest price that we work first, we should be able to go to the second contractor, which we've done. And when they're booked, go to the third contractor and approve that contract because we've already gone through two formal board steps. Now, to me, and understanding you know, what our bylaws say and our procedures, that is the perfect place to have an electronic vote and to have going into this upcoming year, a board resolution that says, when we run into this situation where it's approved in a budget, where we've approved the con RFP, where we've approved the contractors, where it comes in under budget, John should be able to send an email to us saying, I'm meeting with this contractor tomorrow and I need to be able to sign this contract. And we should be able to do that electronically rather than bring people in from all points of the country <laughs> to, to approve something that we've already approved in two prior steps. Right. Other discussion? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of approving the Fisher Marine contract as presented, please signify by saying aye. 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 <laughs> Any opposed? Motion carries. Next item on the agenda was added. Uh, it's to rescind the motion for the RFP for the accounting firm. Frank? Yes. Uh, the, the motion to rescind a motion to issue a RFP for auditing services until the first quarter of fiscal year 2021. Uh, the purpose is to delay the issuance of an RFP for auditing services until the first quarter of 2021. The effect is to continue with our current auditing firm through the uh, current fiscal year, which is 19 and 20. And the background is at the organizational meeting, a, a motion was made to issue an RFP for auditing services. Upon recommendation of the GM, this motion will delay the issuance of that RFP until the first quarter of the next fiscal year. And that recommendation is based on a premise that a potential change in auditing firms during a year when the association is changing systems and you saw, saw it clearly today, part of the reporting is, the reporting today came from Lansa. The reporting next month will come from North Star. Okay, that will result in mixed reporting and by making approving this motion, we'll create uh, an avoidable and unnecessary increase of work for the finance group. Because if you audit, you're wait gonna go through two different procedures. Wait for discussion. Okay, uh, a, a changeover in auditing firms at this time will also create an avoidable increase in the audit complexity as the current firm is familiar with the existing systems and controls while the new firm may not be. Is there a second? Second. Okay, discussion. Go ahead. So while I'm generally not in favor of rescinding motions that are based on the fact that there's some information that one of our firms not have done that motion, I support consider support consideration. Larry? Yeah, I know the uh, when we did this, the thought process is that we should bid these contracts out for every three years. Quite honestly, I know I don't agree with that. Um, I think that uh, particularly when we're talking about uh, our auditors, you know, when they when they uh, bid on the on the work, they level out their costs over a period of time. And I think uh, the. Um, by bringing in another auditing firm, again, they've got to get up to speed on what we're doing. Um, so while John was uh, originally directed to go ahead and do this, I think that you know, I'm more comfortable waiting at least five and, and maybe a few more years um, with the audit process, with the auditors, because, it, it, you know, that institutional knowledge that they gather uh, when they first do the audit, I think is appropriate. Now, in the past, 
I, I think our audit firm was around for 20, 25 years, and that was probably a little too long. But I think three years is, I think that's a little too soon to put it out again. Um, I think that uh, if we, if the auditing, the audit, don't kid yourself, the auditing firms know if you're going to rebid this every few years, then they're going to, they're going to hit us for their, to make up their costs those first few years. So I, I support the motion. Other discussion? John. Yeah, thank you, Doug. Um, first of all, I, Larry's absolutely correct because I saw that situation two years ago when the board or certain members were saying that we should change firms and they immediately hit me with fees that they would have uh, been over several years. But also in addition to everything with this and the reason why we are asking for this is uh, with everything going on, the construction, the bulkheads, which Kobe's team has jump started, we've caught up with, with the last couple of years. All the construction now is kind of coming into play. Uh, the compensation study took a lot of time. With this new system going in, we need to update our policies and procedures, which right now I've identified as something very high on the list, whereas I couldn't get to it six, seven, eight months ago. Kobe and I will work side by side on it and with the departments over the next eight months. I really want to have that binder up to date uh, before we do the bidding. Any other discussion? Now, I'll, I'll state that uh, for the obvious reasons that were um, that were already uh, expressed here, uh, both collide in the sense that we don't want to continue to try to resend motions. But in this case, it makes all the sense in the world because we have additional information. And I would also agree with Larry and John that, you know, in my real life job, you've seen where uh, the accounting firms will spread their costs out over a number of years. Uh, and it only makes sense for us to do that. It's not costing us anything. And as a matter of fact, I think it will save us money in the long run. So I'm in support of uh, delaying this until uh, the appropriate time. Other comments? Seeing none, I'll call the question. All those in favor of the motion as presented to uh, rescind the motion for the RFP for the accounting firm, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, the next item that was added to the agenda was a discussion on resolutions M01, M10, CO2, and M04. Frank. Yes. Okay. Uh, the topic is resolution M01, M10, C02, and M04. Feedback from the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee. The statement, the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee held a special meeting to discuss the changes proposed in the first readings of the above resolutions. The feedback from the committee is attached. It was in your original package. Uh, in addition, the resolutions incorporating the feedback for M01 and M10 are attached. Uh, and then for background, I have included in the attached. Okay. All right, the floor is open for discussion. May. Frank. Uh, there's one other thing in the board package that's not available in the public package, and that is uh, last night at, uh, uh, I received an email from uh, the chairman of the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee, Jim, and basically said there's insufficient time for the, for the committee to review it, but based on his input, M01 does incorporate the comments from the committee, uh, and he appreciated his expressed his appreciation for consideration uh, of the comments. However, the committee does have three questions. And, and one of the reasons I wanted to bring this up as a discussion topic, and I was debating bringing it up as a motion, really, this is a very, very complex change in the way that we handle violations of our declarations of restrictions. And the committee needs time to review it. The Architectural Review Committee should certainly see this. They were copied on it. And I think each of you as a board member needs to take a look at it. Uh, but complicating that somewhat is the fact that it's a pressing issue in terms from the management. And I also have this little date to have a knee replaced on November 18th. And my availability for the December meeting is somewhat questionable as a result. So that's why I wanted to have the discussions. But three questions were raised, and I think they're valid. The first one is typically we do not send resolutions to an attorney. The committee feels this one should be sent to the attorney, and I think we should do so because we're talking things where we know that when we are forced to engage this resolution as written, we are going to be in a court of law. Okay, so I think review by an attorney before we vote on it is makes all kind of sense. Uh, the second is just a protocol because Again, we typically don't rescind things and we go first reading, second reading. Now we're rescinding. And the, the question that I had was, well, because there's a recommendation on actually rescinding M04, 
rather than just redlining part of it. And do I do that as a second reading or as a motion? So that's addressed here. And the third is the entry on property. And this, this becomes an interesting thing because we've discussed it. And that is, do we as a board still want to give the general manager the option of going on the property? And based on today's discussion, I would say this. Uh, in looking at these, and if you look at the chart that Colby put up, the vast majority of people comply well within the 30-day limit that we're talking about. Everybody has an opportunity to go in front of the Architectural Review Committee. The Architectural Review Committee, we can modify this procedure to say the Architectural Review Committee can give the option to the violator of us going on the property with their permission and billing them, which takes care of that would also, from a board standpoint and from just, you know, dotting our I's and crossing our T's, we'd have to say that we are going to authorize the GM to authorize public works going on the property when the Architectural Review Committee presents that option to the violator and they accept it. Okay, and that dots that. Uh, dot that I and cross the T. But at the end of the day, uh, with that, what I call relatively minor change in giving that option, we still are faced with this situation. The majority of the people on that chart, the, in the, the violations that go back for years, simply ignore what they're, they're being asked to do and the declaration of restrictions. So that's why we need the court order to force that issue because there's nothing in our power that we can do. You know, we send a letter. I mean, we can offer the ability to get a variance, get an extension, to actually even, in effect, waive it and say this is not a violation. But the when we look at this class of violations that go on forever and ever and the people complain about it, detracting from their the adjacent property value, you simply aren't getting responses from the violator. Other discussion? I have a, I have a comment. So uh, go back to what my dad told me a long time ago. If you don't have time to do it right, when are you going to have time to do it over? I think it's time for us to take another look at this because I would agree with you, Frank. It's very complex. There are a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of uh, interconnectivity between not only the declarations of restrictions, uh, but the bylaws and also some of the resolutions. So there's a lot, as I said, moving parts. I think we really need to get our head around it. I would wholeheartedly agree that this does need to go before the attorney. Um, the I'm still a little, I, don't know, I just don't know how I feel. The idea is that Going on to the property, the practical side of me understands the risk associated with it. The 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 stringent by the letter of the law side of me says the declaration of restrictions allows us to go on to the properties. So I you know, and again, I feel like we're you know we're we're paying to get a court order to do what we're already legally allowed to do, and that's that's kind of a dilemma. And maybe some further discussion will alleviate some of that. I don't think it's too it's a it's a problematic to have what. You stated, Frank, uh, in the in the uh, resolution, it might be a bit redundant, but it also serves as another reference point to kind of maybe su support what's in the declaration of restrictions. I'm not sure how many of our homeowners really read the you know the terms and conditions of our DRs, but nevertheless, that's that's the one thing I struggle with. I, I I think this is a great idea to have the discussion. I think more discussion is warranted, um, and I don't know. And I, I'm going to put the GM on the spot here, saying, is there anything that a continued discussion and a delay in making a decision on this going to affect the things that you're doing? No. Okay. So we have the luxury of time. We're not holding up anything operationally. We're not in, incurring any ongoing, you know, fines or legal costs associated with the delay. So uh, I would just throw it out that uh, uh, as a board, uh, we have now the responsibility that now that we've got more information, I think we have two action items and correct me if I'm wrong, if we want to add more, I think the first one is to, uh, have a, another discussion about this and, sh and get get our, all of our ideas and opinions on this put together. And then once we have what we'll call the, you know, the next to last draft, and we send it over to our attorney for a review and get his feedback and then have a final review after his feedback to go and finally get to the point where we say, guys, I think this is where we are. Any any thoughts or reactions to that as an approach? I have one. Uh, yeah. No, I think that's a very, very good approach. We spent 
a long time on this in the bylaws, rules, and regulations committee, and I think this, that continued discussion at that level, and Jim, certainly jump in and disagree with me if you would, but um, I, I think that we were knee deep in a conversation that probably hadn't necessarily reached a conclusion because our time on the room ran out. So I would like to see this go back there with real clarity brought to the <clears throat> subject before it comes to the full body for a vote. So, Cami, as the uh, liaison to the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee, would you take it upon yourself to sort of spearhead the effort to get the Bylaws and Resolutions Committee uh, whenever they're going to meet again yes. and have that on their agenda and ask them to provide us some feedback? I most certainly will. All right. Thank you. Uh, Other discussion? Larry? Yeah, Cami, just could you uh, let let us know when that meeting is going to be? Because I because of the complexity, yeah, yeah. I'd like to I probably yeah. want to attend that meeting. Oh, certainly. Yeah. One thing I would suggest, right. OK, uh, I do think that as written right now with the comments from the bylaws and resolutions committee, it would be advantageous for us to send this to the attorney. As a, as a first step? Right. Because I think rather than us go, we're going to be talking about something we've already talked about. OK. And the committee's already said there that it makes a sense for the attorney review. Mm -hmm. So if there's something in there right now that the attorney would say, whoa, this is a showstopper. OK. Discussing okay. and then sending uh -huh. the attorney where we can get ahead of the time, we can send this to them. Including, I can modify the procedure to say, look, we'll give the option at the ARC hearing to uh, have the violator convey to us their express permission to have public works go on the property, which addresses something from another board member. And then I think at that point in time, the, the real issue then, Doug, becomes how do you cross this bridge of we go through a process that we have. And the person who, and I'll use the term alleged violation, says, I'm not going to do anything. Okay. And basically they're saying, you want me to do something? Sue me. Okay. So what do we do? Talk more? Because I will tell you, by the past boards have taken the position when they're pushed in that situation, they back down. And that's why we have violations going back to 2005 for the same thing that come up meeting after meeting year after year. All right, Frank, uh, point taken. Unless anybody has a problem, then we'll modify our approach a little bit. Let's get what we have right now. Do you want to, are you suggesting to put in this, uh, what you'd mentioned about during the ARC hearing, uh, the uh, right. possibility I'll, of having them uh, allow people to go on their property? Right, I'll, I'll modify put, the put, changes. All right, and then we'll get that, we'll send that to the attorney. Right. Uh, and then we'll react to the feedback accordingly. And then I would think the next logical Progression would be, uh, Cammy, that we could take the feedback from the attorney and pass that along to the bylaws and resolutions committee for yes. their review, and then they can come back after that. Does that sound like an okay approach for everybody? One suggestion, if I may, Mr. Can we suspend the rules and ask Jim if that satisfies the questions of the committee? Uh, concerned about suspending Robert's rules? Mm -hmm. I right, consider Robert's rules suspended. Jim? Okay. Uh, I'm in agreement with Frank and the consideration should go, I think, uh, to the attorney uh, before going much further. Uh, it, it's a little bit, I got a little bit, I'm a little bit difficulty of, of trying to keep track of where we're going because, for example, with further consideration by the, the bylaws and resolutions advisory committee, our next meeting is actually after the next board meeting. So, Wherever we go for further consideration by the by the committee, it's going to have to be a special, or perhaps a special uh, co uh, committee meeting, as we did here recently. But I, I'm clearly in agreement with with Frank that the next step, or one of the next, certainly the next step, should be to go to the the attorney, and and let's go from there and determine uh, what's going to happen next. Now. The, the involvement of the bylaws and resolutions advisory committee, I think we have to make a determination. Uh, okay, when does it come back to the committee 
If it's going to come back to the committee before the next board meeting, we're going to have to have a special meeting. Uh, I'm not sure I know what more to say in, in this discussion, uh, but that that's uh, basically my comment. Jim, would you be in agreement that uh, the com committee would want to review the information and the feedback from the attorney as uh, the next step? I think so, yes. Okay. I agree, All right. yes. All right. Other questions for Jim? Just There's only, oh, right. uh, from a timing standpoint, I can certainly put the changes that we've discussed in terms of giving the option for the violator to to have public works going to property, I can have that ready to go to the attorney Monday morning. Okay. And then I think that then it's incumbent on us to tell Jeremy, we would like to, we want an answer back within X number of days uh, to do that. Um, and mm -hmm. I can also incorporate number three, the entry onto the property, the questionnaire, uh, and have Jeremy take a look at that and how that should be incorporated in and w incorporate his mm -hmm. feedback and I would say within the next, hopefully, 10 days, we could have this finalized in the committee's hands uh, with the changes and in input from the attorney right. to, to move forward. Because I think it's something that we should move forward on. Uh, you know, it, it's something we should move forward on. And, and I'll say this comment, which I've said to the committee, and I'll say to everybody, you can't legislate common sense. And compassion. So if somebody has a pile of leaves in their front yard and we go down to the court, I would hope that the court would call us into chambers and ask us some things regarding our relative sanity and what we're doing wasting court time. Okay. But by the same token, there are some properties. Imagine a homeowner trying to sell a, their house when the house next to them has a hole in the roof. Okay. Or when they have junk cars in the driveway for 14 years running straight. That's the kind of stuff we can't afford to let slide and say we're doing our job. Uh, Colette. Yeah, I'm just a little concerned about this timing business of the meeting. Um, I agree with your dad that we want to necessary to do that, and I don't want to pressure the bylaws committee to pull together a meeting uh, to get this done before our next meeting if it's going to compromise the quality of what they're able to do and mm -hmm. compromise the ability to get the right people in the room at the right time. I, too, would like to attend this meeting. I think it would be prudent for as many board meetings members as possible to do. I think... Um, you probably want to have the full complement of your committee in this discussion as well. So I'm not so concerned about getting it done by our December. So I do want to make sure. Larry. Yeah. I, uh, first off, I don't think the attorneys are going to get this back to us in 10 days. This is a, this is, this is going to take some time for the council. Uh, and again, as we started this conversation, I don't, and as John confirmed, I don't think this is, you know, we have to have this tomorrow. So I think, uh, I don't think we, I agree with Colette. I don't think we need to put that undue pressure on the budget or the uh, bylaws committee. I think we send it to council, give them an adequate, you know, give them an adequate amount of time to get this done. And let's, because Frank's absolutely right. The judge is going to call us in and say, what are you people crazy? You know, they got debris on it, but it, that's it, that's only a part of the story. So I think we should do this right. And let's take our time and do it right. The discussion? Yeah, I just Steve. a question. Um, there's nothing that would prohibit us from having public works. If we did our, put the letter together that said, if you can't clear that brush off your property, public works will do it for X amount of dollars. We can go ahead and do that anyway, correct? Yeah, I believe so, we can. So I think we could... We could put that as an Correct. action item and get that okay. started as long as you guys can handle it. You know, it adds to your workload. But I, that way, I think we could move along on some of the more miscellaneous kinds of violations and, and keep that moving. Okay. All right. Um, then uh, I'd consider uh, Robert's rules of order reinstated. Um, very good discussion. I think we have an agreement on some action items. Frank, if you can get the... Uh, Updates that you had mentioned to me, I will get them in front of uh, Jeremy as soon as I receive them from you. 
And then uh, and it kind of in uh, what we were saying is I think the we do have the luxury of time based on what John had mentioned, Colette, Larry, and several of us. So I think, you know, we, we've, I think we got the right process in place. I wouldn't put that uh, concern about the timeline as a critical factor. So uh, unless anybody has any more discussion, let's take that as the action item just as a review. Frank, you give me that information. I'll get it to Jeremy. And then based on when we get that feedback, we'll, we'll take the next appropriate steps. Everybody okay with that? Yep. Okay. All right. Consider that item taken care of. And seeing that that is the last item of our new business, that will close the new business portion of the meeting and we'll move into appointments. We have two for this particular one. It's Jeff Nepper, first term bylaws of resolutions, Gary Miller, second term clubs. Unless anybody has any concern, I'd like to entertain a motion for both of those appointments. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion on either of them? Seeing none, uh, I'll ask that we approve the appointments of Jeff Nepper, first term of bylaws and resolutions and Gary Miller, second term clubs. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. And the last item on the agenda is a motion to move into closed section. Let me make sure I read it for public consumption here. Hold on. And by. So meeting of the board of directors, uh, a motion to adjourn a closed session as permitted by Maryland Homeowners Act, uh, section 11B111, subsection 4. Uh, with regard to uh, discussions of matters pertaining to employees and personnel. Is there a second? Second. All right. All those in favor of moving to closed session, as noted, please signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. All right.